Guys, Tim here. I'm in beautiful WA at the Ramada Resort in Dunsborough, spending Christmas with the family. I'll be flying back to Sydney on a Virgin Australia flight, which is an A33200, fine business class. So why don't you join me and check out how the flight goes. Great, see you later. So this is the business class lounge in Perth for Virgin Australia. So I'm gonna take you around, just give you a quick look at this particular lounge. I had to be really quick because in a short while, one of the Virgin staff will ask me to stop filming and basically that's, that's what I did. So I didn't wanna upset anyone, so definitely I stopped filming, but there was sufficient time to get a quick look around before they actually told me to stop filming. Definitely not a space, um, a good selection of nice cold foods. It seemed quite fresh. Just going around, having a quick look again, going back. It was Boxing Day, so it was really quiet. Maybe there would have been a greater selection if it wasn't Boxing Day. Going along through some of the spreads and breads options, just as we go here, a toaster, you can get a sandwich maker. There was an open selection of wine and beer. There was the odd spirit, but I'm guessing after Boxing Day, who would want to drink that much? As you can see, there was another bar there, but that was closed because it was business, uh, sorry, because it was Boxing Day. Lots of space. Anyway, I thought I might just show you some of the selections I had in terms of hot food. There was a spicy pumpkin soup with garlic and chili, and there's also a Boscaiola pasta. I mixed that with a Crown Lager. That's the A330-200 we flew on. That's the front view of the aircraft, and I'm about to enter right now. So uh, this is my seat right here. It was the very last seat in business class, left-hand window side. I'm going to now enter the seat. Make myself comfortable. Certainly, I enjoyed this configuration. I'm pretty sure it's called a reverse herringbone. If I'm wrong, please, uh, you can put it in the comment box. But for the most part, this was a very comfortable and very easy to use in terms of functionality seat. The controls are very modern and sophisticated, just like the 707 Dreamliner. If you haven't checked out my Dreamliner video, please do so. Please do so. Uh, it was filmed about three months ago. This was the pantry selection. Interesting term there, pantry. The, the term pantry would refer to a continual use throughout the flight. Now, I didn't test that option, but I think it's worth testing. But certainly that's what the term would refer to. Interest, it'll be interesting to see if someone has actually attempted to uh, use that service. This is the menu. You will get a closer selection or a view of what I chose a bit later in the review. I thought the IFE was excellent. I think the Air Canada one on my previous review was a little bit better, but I certainly had no complaints about this particular IFE selection. Very, very responsive on the touchscreen. I thought the selection of dramas, TV shows, comedies, movie, film, sport, and news, which is my favorite. Obviously, I'd like more, new, more news. I suppose news is very uh, date sensitive, if I could use that terminology, but um, I love just flying and keeping up to date with world and political movements. So let's go for a bit of a seat tour at the moment. I'll open up the first compartment and you will find your remote control right there. Some people are thinking, why would you need a remote control if you have a touchpad? Well, that's if you want to lie flat, enjoy a film and then control the TV from a flat position. There's a small TV space, uh, storage space right there. It has the audio jack and other usage ports to it. I do apologize for my feet. I was not given socks or slippers on this flight. Interesting, I thought it was a five hour flight. Five hours on business class, I think should warrant that, but I'm not too fussy. I certainly would never fuss about business class. I can just show you what's good and bad, but from a young person that never got to fly business class until they turned the age of 30, now in my 40s, you know, I can never complain about being able to afford business class. Uh, I certainly, as a child, I was never given that opportunity, so I will never complain about it. But um, I think it's fair to say that, you know, if one was better than the other, but I'll never complain. All right, so let's go to the actual seat function now. I'm just using the light button on the top right-hand corner of the 
seat controls on the left hand side of the seat. Everything worked well. Now I'm actually going to give you a demonstration of how the seat extends. This is the relax mode. It'll go to about 45 degrees and give you a nice relaxed seating position, if I could say that. And then what happens is if I put into bed, you will find that the seat will actually extend to the ottoman and then that will make a fully flat surface or bed of which then you can lay your mattress. Now, I didn't ask for that service. I don't even know if they gave that service, but certainly I didn't need it. Um, I'm not gonna say they didn't give it. That's a Johnny Walker Black. I paired that with some lovely black olives. There was a pre-dinner drink and starter. And I was watching the news. I love, I love the current affairs. That's the entree. Start off with some nice bread. Move across to some zucchini and garlic soup with walnuts and looks like almonds there. Certainly no complaints. I thought the food was of a very good standard. Had some Chardonnay and some sparkling water. Watching the film Juno there. Love the old flicks. Maybe I'm showing my age. And of course the iconic Virgin Australia salt and pepper shakers in the shape of a opera house or the opera house. Now this was a really nice complete meal. This was the barramundi, good quality, but the most important thing is the skin. The skin was cooked very well without any sort of fishy texture. I know it's business class, but still when you store fish, it never comes out that fresh. Well, well done to Virgin on, Virgin on that particular piece of cookery. I thought it was excellent. This was a cheese and vanilla slice. So the, certainly the taste was very good. Maybe the presentation had some work. Uh, that is a wing shot. I'm going to show you now an example of how sometimes a seat can get quite messy just after a few hours. Everyone likes to show you like a beautiful, neat image of a seat, but sometimes uh, it can become your little mini home, so to speak, and uh, this is no exception. Bit of a mess there I made, and I do apologize for that. Sorry for the feet again. Okay, panning off to the rest of the aircraft. Boxing day, quite empty. It's a one-to-one -one configuration with direct aisle access. Back to my seat. And I thought to myself, I better look back there again. Because if I, well, I'm going to go outside and look at, the, look at the wing again. But if I pan back quickly, I might have a look at the fiberglass partition, which is quite interesting. There it is right there. So I wonder if you get full privacy with that, it seems like a, maybe a purple or a mauve perspex partition. That's quite an interesting choice of partition they've used. Again, it's a first world problem thing, I'm sure, because I'd love to fly in business class as much, you know, every flight, but I can't. When I do, I'll certainly make the video and show you. All right, so eventually, I'm gonna show you now how the seat configures and how you can fit in the seat in terms of size weight ratio. So to give you my basic statistics, uh, 182 centimeters, and this was, please forgive me, this was after Boxing Day or Boxing Day, so after Christmas, so I put on a few kilos. I'm at about 96 kilos here. So certainly there, I do take up some space in the old business class seat. There are some business class configurations, again, never complaining, that maybe might be a little less suited to someone who wants to wriggle around, so to speak. However, this particular business class configuration left me with a lot of space. So certainly, big tick to Virgin. Very, very comfortable. Anyway, I can just pan the camera. I had, you can see how amateur I am. I have no sort of extensive GoPros and cameras to use. I just use my phone, I lift it up and I maneuver it the best I can. So I do apologize for the lack of quality of my filming. After a hefty meal, about three, bo three, three bottles, three glasses of wine, barramundi, and a fair meal at the, at the business class lounge, I'm enjoying a very comfortable layback. Interesting fo footage here. My mother is actually on that aircraft. That's a 737-800. We left from Perth at the, oh, actually no, she left 10 minutes before I did. Uh, and I think we got there first. And I'm sure there is a reason, obviously it could be tailwinds and sky track and the rest of it. But 
we did get there first and she's on that flight. I'm about to meet her in about 20 minutes at the Qantas baggage. So as you can see, Sydney International Airport, uh, sorry, Sydney Domestic Terminal, and we are at the Virgin section of it. So obviously like most domestic and international airports, there is a, it's divided by the type of airline. So you've got Virgin in one section, Tiger and Jetstar and Qantas. It was actually a bit of a, a bit of a grind to go meet my mother because it's quite a bit of a walk from Virgin to Qantas. So if for any reason you did what I did and uh, was meeting someone, same time, different actual aircraft, or sorry, different airline, it's a bit of a trek from Virgin to Qantas. Nevertheless, she's 80 and I'm not, so I did it. Thank you, have a great day.